Welcome, welcome, patrons. I know I said next time you see me, things look different, but I'm just squeezing in one last video to talk about the small teaser that dropped earlier on Dragon Age Day titled Thetis Calls. Yeah, I mean, it's not as juicy as some of the previous ones, in my opinion, but let's dig into what we can figure out from the newest tease. The visuals. So the whole teaser this time features a wonderfully animated map of Northern Thetis showcasing off three major locations and then zooming out to look at them all. The first location is the nation of Antiva with the capital city of Treviso highlighted on the map. It then cuts to a cityscape, which I think we can safely assume is Treviso. Now on the Bioware blog, they also released a higher red image of the city scene describing it as twisting canals and gleaming towers of Antiva where crows may lurk in any shadow. Also in the Bioware blog, it has like this little quote about Antiva matching a drawing from a fan artist they hired for Dragon Age Day. Ever the pinnacle of mystery and intrigue, the crows watch from the deep shadows of beautiful Antiva. Something, however, is amiss, and they are set on uncovering the source. Now if you look very, 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 very closely at the image, you can just make out canary banners hanging from the central building. Now if you haven't been keeping up with the Dragon Age Day short stories, then it's going to come as a bit of surprise that the Antom of the Canari has split off from the queue and are now rolling down much of Northern Thetis. At the moment, they have control of Treviso. I guess my one question with a quote, however, is that, uh, what, what do you mean they have to uncover the source of what is amiss? Isn't that the obvious part? Uh, is there something more to the Canary occupation that we don't know about? Now, part of me also wonders if this quote is just about the drawing, but like later down the line, it mentions something in the Anderfels that isn't obvious from the drawing itself. So while it could really go either way at this point, I'm going to treat it like it's all related, but like keep in mind, it could also not be at all. Next, we see the nation of Ravain, which doesn't really have any cities listed and is depicted as a giant squid for reasons. It's neat. Now, from there, we see ruins of some sort of coastline. Now, the ruins are interesting in that it feels kind of Skyhold-esque to me. It's really mostly the stone texture, but the fortress-like windows aren't helping. Now, out in the distance is a sunken ship and this statue, which I'm surprised they included because we see this all over the place in Inquisition, although not really at this angle. You Cullen Mancers should probably recognize it the most as this statue is actually seen in the Skyhold Chapel. Now, it is used in other places around Ferelden as well, so it's not like a Skyhold specific, but overall I'm thinking this building is very much southern in its design, and as it's also connected with Andraste, which is... It's, I mean, a little unusual, given Ravain is the least in Drazian nation. I mean, it's not impossible. However, as like a given its state, this is maybe an outpost for the Chantry or at least an Andrastian aligned faction that was abandoned because it's not not really well kept. Uh, but they sort of kind of just wh whatever this is, they gave up on Ravain for some reason. So I, I, I don't know. I kind of like like Chantry related ruins, perhaps. Now, the giant bloom dome also sticks out, but um, I can't tell you anything interesting about that, honestly. Now, the Bioware blog has this to say on Ravain. The turquoise seas of Ravain, with its rushes of greenery and a hardy seafaring people, and later, upon eastern shores and sun-kissed sands, the lords of fortune no longer hold dominion over the coast of Ravain, not when dragons are growing bolder and lying waste to their ships. We do see some sort of large bones like a sunken ship, so I wonder if the Lords of Fortune have like managed to take a down a dragon at some point. But like that being said, having googled what whale bones look like, I, I kind of actually think this is a dead whale. As it really only seems to be like a spine with no bones for like a wings and a back leg. Now our final location is in the nation of the Anderfels, with the Grey Warden's headquarters of Weissaupt highlighted. Then we see a stormy look at something. Now, I'm assuming a Grey Warden base, given the context, but I have no idea what these circular pillars are. To be honest, it's actually kind of bothering me. <laughs> There's just a lot of stuff going on in this image that I just kind of like almost can't make out. You can see a sort of like makeshift zipline, golden statues that like kind of seem elven to me a little bit, and like this glowing red biomass that reminds me of the previous trailers. You can also make out like Griffin statue, like gargoyles. the griffin gargoyles, which is kind of neat. Uh, but it really does seem like an old building that became just unable to be maintained, and then they had it built on top of it with shittier and cheaper materials. So I think this is why so <laughs> As the Grey Wardens have had less funding in the last hundred years, I, I just think this is the state of Weissapt at the moment. There's this really impressive, imposing building that is just fallen into disrepair, and they had a 
spill on top of it with planks and bullshit. The Bioware blog has this to say on the Anderfells, the desolate, beautiful badlands of the Anderfells, with curtains of distant mountains and spires, and... To the far west, three Grey Wardens patrol the Anderfells. Tremors have been creating disturbances of late. Their cause is unknown. Upon the distant horizons, a storm of ominous intent brews and darkens the skies. I, I'm not really sure if any of these three Wardens are supposed to be recognizable. I personally don't recognize them. But the tremors do give me pause. I also assume that the ominous storm is the one seen in the trailer, but like... Eh? Finally, we cut to a larger map of Northern Thetis with a bunch of different illustrated details that are pretty interesting, although some of the juicier parts are covered by clouds. Now, okay, honestly, my friend Andaratia over on Twitter just did an insane amount of work and put together an amazing infographic on her findings of the larger map, and frankly, she did, just did like a much better job than I ever could. Like, look how pretty this is. I'm not that good. <laughs> But I've linked her post down below, so if you want to, like, zoom in and, like, see all that she found, you can do so. But, like, I, I do want to highlight a few things if you're a little bit busy at the moment. Uh, but please go check out Andy's work. So, hidden within the mist, Andy found that there are more locations than that are highlighted in the trailer. The Bioware blog does hint at other locations, so I would be willing to bet that Andy found what they're probably referencing. Which includes the floating ruins of the Arlathan Forest, Minrathis, probably the Grand Dakota. Acropolis, fingers crossed, and if we're getting a little crazy, Cow Chirac, maybe? The audio. Okay, I don't know why, but for some reason, I have been locked on the audio portion of this trailer for once. <laughs> now, possibly because a lot of the locations that the visuals tease have kind of been on the radar for quite some time now. I don't know. However, I... <sighs> This is a bit embarrassing. I think some of the focusing so heavy on this has to do with what I've been up to these past few months. See, while I've been taking a break from guild work to kind of just like recover from bullshit, I have been playing Final Fantasy XIV, uh, the MMO one. So this is my first MMO and it's been an experience. Um, but while I've been actually kind of loving the story so far, one of my favorite parts is just hearing how many times I can clock a Dragon Age voice actor doing a role in this game. I'll just be minding my own business and then BAM! A voice reaches like into my heart and I just get like an obsessive need to like know where I know them from and like some of the times I even like, oh, it's Sarah. And like from this experience, I found I have actually a pretty decent ear for voice actors. Uh, more on this in a bit, but I, I just for some reason finding voice actors is like a, in, in their different roles has been like a passion project of mine for the past like six months. <laughs> Now, in total, there are four voices that are featured in the trailer. The first voice says, We fight for everyone, and we always will. The crows rule Antiva. A friend who plays Overwatch immediately caught that the voice is Carolina Ravasa, known for her role as Sombra. She hasn't actually been in anything that I've personally come across, but looking her up on YouTube, I, I agree that it sounds a lot like her. Now, who in game is saying this? Uh, I, I think any woman of the crows is actually a good guess. Uh, the the in lore on Dorotea and Katarina de la Morte are probably at the top of my list because they're the ones that are being set up the most um, in, in the Twinter Nights. But it could also be like a new crow we haven't met yet. Now, from the way she talks, I'm assuming it's someone in the upper ranks. But honestly, it's very open-ended. The second voice says... Glory to the risen gods that come to deliver this world. Unfortunately, this is the only voice I can't track. Uh, I, I don't even know where to begin with this one. It just hasn't sound like anything I've ever heard before. Um, but if you have suggestions, please leave them down below. I'd love to find out who this is. Um, now, this is just also the most open-ended of the lines, given recent events, risen gods can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. It could be an elf talking about the Evanuris, a Tevinter talking about the old gods, a Ravani talking about the original animus gods that we know almost nothing about. It could even be a dwarf, I guess, talking about the stone, because there's like that one trailer from like an eon ago that showed like a mountain talking, but the dwarves don't really talk about the stone like a god. So honestly, I would just cross that one off your list. But anyway, um, at this rate, this is honestly the most mysterious line of the whole trailer. Um, we know nothing about this. I don't understand. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> and the third voice. Grey Wardens don't hide in our castle. I won't ask good soldiers to turn tail and run. As for the who the voice is, it's, it's Nicholas Bolton, uh, or better known to us as Male Hawk Voice. I'm not going to argue with anyone here. It, it's him. 
having played other games with him, it's so easy to spot now. It, it, <laughs> he just has a very distinctive tone. However, that being said, I don't think he's actually playing Hawk here. As having played Dragon Age 2 too many times, the performance just isn't the same as his various Hawk voices. Because, like, each Hawk voice has a little bit of a difference. It's, it's kind of hard to pick up unless you play it a hundred times <laughs> like I have. But, like, just... Yeah, I, I don't know. Ha having heard him in uh, Final Fantasy, he's in that too. It, it just sounds more like his Final Fantasy voice than his Hawk voice. And I don't know how else to give you that vibe. <laughs> As for who it's supposed to be, I think it's an obvious answer. It's like somebody in the Wardens. Uh, otherwise, why would he say this? Now, as this is literally Weishaupt, the most obvious answer is that this is the first Warden who is the head of the entire Grey Wardens, which, fun fact, we actually do not have a name for the current First Warden. I don't know if we've ever had a name for any of the First Wardens. <laughs> we can name, like, a ton of Divines, but fuck me if I have to name a First Warden. D we've, I don't know why they've never filled that lore in. And finally, the fourth voice. All the world will soon share the peace and comfort of my reign. Now there are a couple things about this last line, but let's start with the voice actor and also jump back into like the headspace I've been in for the last few months. Now when I heard this voice, I knew I had fucking heard it before and it was driving me mental. There was just something about it that just sounded so familiar and I had the hardest time placing it. I spent hours poring over IMDb, asking people and finally, finally think I might have found it. Now, I will say that minus one person on Twitter, not a lot of people agree with me here and I could totally be wrong. But uh, I believe this is a guy named Joseph Cap. Well, he's actually in Final Fantasy XIV, and I thought I had heard the voice in Final Fantasy XIV. I haven't actually got to the part where he's in yet, so maybe I'm just making this up and it's all bullshit. But what I probably recognize his voice from was from another game I was obsessed over many, many years ago that also heavily shared a voice cast with Dragon Age games, Divinity Original Sin 2. Now his character comes up in the very last bit, well, it's like act three, last, last half of the game, I suppose. So what I'm about to show you is technically spoilers for that game, but I wouldn't consider it like heavy story spoilers, more that this character shows up, I guess. Um, he plays a character called the Shadow Prince, and in my opinion, he has the exact same cadence as the last voice in the new trailer. Let me show you a clip. I would have watched you, like I have all this time. Glad to see you live, sometimes even laugh. A few people I have showed this to weren't as convinced as I am, so I should at least say that this particular part of the game came out in 2017, so this performance is almost six years old at this point. I've listened to a few other performances by this voice actor and he's kind of doing like this voice and honestly none of the other roles I've looked up come close to what we're hearing in Divinity and this trailer if it's the same guy. But this is just my guess for who this this voice is. Let me know what you think. Also, oh my god, if I hear another fucking Patrick Stewart. They don't have Patrick Stewart money, guys. <laughs> Bethesda got lucky. They don't... <laughs> It's not fucking Patrick Stewart. I'm losing my mind. So all that being said, who in the game is this? I mean, frankly, I'm of kind of two minds. One is that I just really want this to be Beetle from the murals. So then the voice is possibly Elgernon or um, Lusicon or one of the old gods. But it could also be the voice of the leader of the Antom. Now, however, with that, this is not even close to the voice of the man who we once knew as Sten. Now, if Sten is indeed the current Aeroshock that has broken apart the Kuhn, then there is absolutely no way that last voice was the, the Aeroshock or the leader of the Antom. But if someone else has taken over the Antom, then yeah, it's totally possible that it could be that guy. Now, I will also say that it could be someone from Deventer, but after a whole game of guy from Deventer wants to be a god, I just don't think they will go that route. I know it's a little bit meta, so maybe I'm wrong, but that's just kind of my assumption that they've already done that and they don't want to redo it. Also, please, guys, this is not Dorian's. <laughs> this is not Dorian's voice actor. This is not Dorian. Please, if I hear another Patrick Stewart, if I hear another Dorian, I'm going to jump out a fucking window. <laughs> the blog posts. So, like every year, there is a Bioware blog post along with the other goodies involved at Dragon Age Day. I've already been using like bits and pieces of it earlier in the video, but here are a few bits and bobs that I wanted to highlight. 
Um, the first one, we didn't get short stories this year. I mean, look, it's been a hard year at Bioware. I get it. I'm not complaining. But um, I miss them. I know I haven't really gone over the channel, but like I, I was, I miss them. I want, I want more stories. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> uh, so when, uh, back to the blog. Uh, so they say this phrase, the fate of the world teeters on the edge of a knife. Now, while on its own, it's just a saying. The same thing is said twice on the newly opened Steam page for Dragon Age Dreadwolf, which uh, I haven't talked about that yet, but you can wishlist on Steam now. Uh, but anyway, now I'm not a copywriter, but when I'm writing scripts for these videos, I try to have like the last line before the outro have like a little punch to it. I'm not great at it, but like, you know, I want it to mean something as that's sort of like a common thing to do in a ton of media, like make you think about the video after you've clicked away, that type of bullshit. Um, and I think that means something here, even more so when you combine this with the image of Solus and the mysterious knife that I think general fan consensus is that this is somehow the healed red lyrium switchblade idol. Um, I don't know. Now, does this mean that the knife is going to be the magical MacGuffin for the game, similar to the orb and perhaps ironically the idol if it does end up being the same thing? Uh, I don't know. I kind of like the idea that the idol has the MacGuffin for two games. <laughs> Make make that like a tradition of Dragon Age now. Every other like every even number Dragon Age game, just the idol comes back. <laughs> How? I don't know. <laughs> Why not? And because I've been working on this video long enough, weeks after Dragon Age Day, a uh, peachy powder on the Dragon Age subreddit Discord uh, found a Dragon Age Red Wolf listed on a page that scrapes Steam data, and within a bunch of the images of the listing is this icon with a knife. Hmm. Now the icon itself, I'm going to assume, is like what could be the app icon, but so far there isn't anything solid on like what the use for this would be. Uh, it could also change over time. Maybe it's not even related because uh, later down in like the same image, they have a another icon that's actually technically has an icon for another game series they're trying to release. So maybe this is for something else, but like the branding of it looks very Dragon Age to me and like with the purple and the gold thing they got going on. So I want to say it is Dragon Age, but technically it could be a mistaken upload for something else. Now at the very end of the blog, it also helps answer the question raised in the video. What does full reveal mean per the blog? With that will come our full reveal, including new trailers, gameplay, and of course, the long-awaited release date. Holy shit. <laughs> All right, anyway, obviously they haven't announced where they're going to release this info, and trailer releases have been kind of weird post-COVID and with the pushback against the most recent Game Awards, EA might honestly revive their own live stream to talk about Dreadwolf, or Bioware might just post media to social themselves without any third party. Or maybe Jeff makes amends and we do actually see things during next summer's Game Fest. Now, either way, and it feels kind of weird to say this and actually have something solid to base this prediction on, but there is a decent chance you could be getting Dragon Age Dreadwolf for the holidays next year. This time next year, you could be cozy in your pajamas, doing whatever the fuck you want to do, playing Dragon Age Dreadwolf. That's a weird sentence to say. <laughs> it's been too long. So why do I say that we could be getting Dreadwolf in 2024? In recent Bioware game releases, there's been about a five to six month window of heavy marketing before the release. For Andromeda, the reveal trailer came out November 7th, 2016, with the game releasing on March 21st, 2017. Anthem is a little odd because marketing for the new IP is a little different for established ones as you want to kind of build up hype for longer. But looking at their YouTube channel, after their E3 reveal in June 2018, a bulk of the marketing content came out after September 2018, with release finally hitting in February 2019. If the full reveal of Dragon Age Dreadwolf is summer 2024, then it is actually super reasonable to say we could be getting the game before the end of the year. So prepare your timers, kids. Dust off your Dragon Age world states, break out that last gen consoles and fix those mods that the new EA launcher broke, start those novels, buy the comics, break the spine of the lore books, and prepare your shrines to summon your favorite character. I think it's almost time. <laughs> <laughs>